Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Shomuz Biology. In this lecture, we are going to talk about intermediate filaments. What are intermediate filaments? What are their structure? And what these intermediate filaments are made with? And we are also going to see two important features of this intermediate filament. First is the assembly and formation. And the second one is disassembly or depolymerization. So we will see that in this particular lecture. In this series of lecture, we are talking about cytoskeleton elements and among cytoskeleton elements, we know we have microfilaments, which are actin filaments, we have intermediate filaments and we have microtubules. The microtubule is the largest diameter holding and the microfilaments are the thinnest and in the middle, intermediate diameter is of intermediate filaments. That is why the name is given to them as intermediate filaments. So, intermediate filament structure is not that similar or the, the formation of intermediate filament is totally different than that of the microtubule formation or uh, actin filament formation. Because both microtubule and actin filaments are formed with simple uh, globular proteins sticking to each other like a monomer uh, and forming a polymer. While in case of intermediate filament, we are looking at simple fibrous protein. We are looking at fibrous protein. And uh, the formation of fibrous protein in the cytosol of the cell. Okay, so in the cell cytosol, we have fibrous protein produced, and those fibrous proteins they are modified to form lengthier and much st hugely structurally strength or very structural strength or high structural strength protein material or protein fiber. How exactly this protein fiber is made, we are going to see that. In very simple words, what I can tell is that, uh, so these proteins are made in the cytosol and once the protein is made, it looks something like this, you know, we know that the proteins, they have two things. One is the N-terminal side, let me draw, this is N-terminal and let's say this is C-terminal. This is a simple poly, uh, like the polymer of amino acids and simply known as a polypeptide chain. A linear polypeptide chain produced like this. Now what happens is that such two polypeptide chain that is formed and they are arranged in the same manner that is both having N-terminal site uh, together and C-terminal site together. So this is the formation of first dimer, remember, okay. So this is what we know that they form a dimer but in the dimer state remember one thing that their N-terminal are together and C-terminal are together. Now once the dimer is produced such two dimers, let's say this is one dimer and another dimer but now this time this dimer would be different, okay, would be a diff N terminal in this side, C terminal in the opposite side. So two separate dimers but this two set of dimers, they are anti parallel to each other. This is another dimer, okay. So this was dimer 1, this was dimer 2. Two set of dimers, they are arranged together anti parallelly. Anti-parallelly means first dimer is N-terminal, second dimer is C-terminal in the same side. First dimer is C-terminal, second dimer is N-terminal, same side. That is anti-parallel dimer formation is very, very important. Once the anti-parallel dimers that stick together, they form a, what is known as tetramer, isn't it? This tetramer is produced and this tetramer, now I am going to show you uh, like this, let's say this green one, so this is N. C and I will draw the red one. So, this is C, this is N, this is C. So, this is a tetramer. Such multiple tetramers, such multiple tetramers will be joined together like this, one after another like this and they arrange themselves. This is known as protofilament. We call them proto filament and thus more and more this protofilament assemble themselves, interact with themselves just like a formation of rope. Now if you take a rope, particularly the rope which is built with the coconut husk, so that particular rope and if you rotate the rope, every single fiber will be separate. It's the same thing, you know, individual fiber is created like protofilament. Such multiple protofilaments are stitched together, interacting together and they are tied together. And now this looks something like this, like a fiber, fiber, fiber structure like this. We call it intermediate 
filament at the end okay at the end we call it intermediate filament so starting with a simple polypeptide chain dimer then anti parallel dimers form tetramer then the tetramers interact to each other side by not not side by side interacting to the pole individual poles to make protofilament and finally the protofilament they are joined side by side to make thicker diameter and that is known as the intermediate filament that's how simply the intermediate filament structure is formed now there is a lot difference between this intermediate filament structure to that of the actin filament in actin filament requirement of atp is needed it's is obviously there but in case of intermediate filament formation in the protein synthesis part gtp will be required like every single protein synthesis but here in the process of assembly there is no direct requirement of atp and one another very important feature about the intermediate filament is the intermediate filament are non polar means non polar means not about uh, whether uh, the polarity like interaction to the hydrophobic or hydrophilic material what i mean to say is the 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 the, the terminal sites because in actin filament we have a plus end and a minus end uh, the microtubules also have a plus end and a minus end so actin filament microtubules they also have microtubule is a thick one they also have actin uh, plus n and minus n but intermediate filament don't have any plus or minus n intermediate filaments lack any plus or minus n so they don't have any polarization they don't have any polarity in both the terminal side both are equal because that's how they are organized the total n and c present in both the sides are almost equal okay that is why there is no polarity in there and the role of intermediate filament is to connect the cell the sideways of the cell particularly to the neighboring cell so individually what i can uh, show you here in this particular picture intermediate filaments have more a uh, role in connecting the neighboring cells with each other okay so we know that uh, between the neighboring cells we have desmosome structures right we have structure like what we call it as a desmosomes like this okay and what happen is that they also have cytoskeleton elements like actin filaments and everything uh, like going on now what this intermediate filament uh, does let's take the red color intermediate filament uh, is job is to connect them to the other cytoskeleton material out there okay other cytoskeleton material that is a uh, beta micro tubule beat actin filaments they are connected there and also the intermediate filaments are also found the red color one they are also found here uh, to the basement of stitching the cell to the tissue cementing material so this is where the tissue cementing material or tissue basement is there this is stitching is also needed so intermediate filament provides huge structural strength to the cell if we try to pull these cells from this to opposite ends intermediate filament will protect the cells to be pulled out from the sides as well as from the top from both the angle intermediate filaments provide extensive strength to the cell or to the tissue layer now let me give you an idea once the, the filament requires uh, to stitch them or connect uh, these structures of the cell to the other cytoskeleton elements so they require other cross linking protein okay plectin was example of uh, such kind of cross linking protein here plectin remember that so once the polymerization is complete the 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 structure is made then plectin is a protein that holds this intermediate structures and and associate them with the rest of the other cytoskeleton element already pre existing in the cell this is very very important all right so i believe our idea of understanding the polymerization of intermediate filament is done now it's time to talk about their depolymerization so d polymerization okay so when we talk about the depolymerization of uh, the intermediate filament what are the factors that depolymerize intermediate filament the very first factor that we are going to talk here is phosphorylation yes this is something that is unique phosphorylation of intermediate filament makes this filament very unstable and ultimately causes the intermediate filament to be uh, you know destabilize and shattered and dephosphorylation event causes the polymerization stability so remember that polymerization phosphorylation causes uh, instability to the intermediate filament depolymerization causes 
stability to the intermediate filament. The second component to the depolymerization factor in intermediate filament is uh, the proteases because this is largely a polypeptide chain so automatically proteases can cleave and degrade and destroy uh, this polypeptide chain so proteases can easily destabilize it so obviously it will it will destabilize it then the third one last one is another heat shock protein heat shock protein 27 is another kind of protein that actually causes destabilization okay because the job of heat shock protein is to guide the nascent polypeptide before folding so that they don't misfold but in this case if hsp 7 27 is associated to intermediate filament most of the time it it brings the destabilization to it dissociation of the amino acid from the polypeptide chain that is done by hsp 27 in here so these are the three important constituents of depolymerization of intermediate filaments and we know about the polymerization and we also know the cross linking is done by remember the cross linking is very important cross linking means interaction of the intermediate filaments to that of the microtubules or microfilament this is very important job and this job is done by proteins like plectin okay and these are the uh, other segment of depolymerization event of uh, or destabilization of intermediate filaments i believe you have a clear idea about intermediate filaments if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future one more thing if you want to understand how exactly the intermediate filament is connecting to the neighboring cells side by side as well as to the basement tissue membrane you want to understand that there is a structure known as desmosome there is a structure known as hemidesmosomes hemidesmosomes are present here desmosomes are present here what are they how the structures are and what are their functions I have separate videos on that, you can watch it.